Today in our 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Demco's Stay and Play Duo Supplemental Braking System. Here at eTrailer, we install, test fit, and review a lot of different products to help answer your questions and ensure proper fit. When flat towing your vehicle behind your motorhome, there's five main components you'll need to do so. First is our tow bar, which is our attachment between our motorhome and our vehicle. In addition to your tow bar, you'll need your safety cables, which is a supplemental attachment in addition to your tow bar. You also need your base plate, which is the connection point on our vehicle that our tow bar is going to attach to. You also need your diode wiring, which takes all the lighting signals on your motor home and transfers them to the lights on your vehicle so people will know your intentions when going down the road. And lastly, your supplemental braking system, which will take all of the brake inputs from your motor home, send them to your vehicle, which will apply the brake inside your vehicle to help you come to a safe stop. Our supplemental braking system is going to be permanently installed on our vehicle which makes it extremely easy because all we got to do is just hook up our connections and then our braking system is basically ready to go. There is an on off switch so you can turn it on and off. That way when you're just normally driving it around, you've got it disarmed. You don't have to worry about any accidental brake applications. The cylinder located here that's clamped around the pedal is powered by air. It's an air pressurized cylinder that's going to pull on our pedal. And it does this dynamically using an inertia sensor that's located in our little box over here and that sensor will help determine the amount of speed that we're slowing down and it uses it to proportionally apply the brake pedal inside of our vehicle to match the amount of force that we're putting on our motor home so we get nice smooth even braking. This is definitely one of the smoothest braking systems out there on the market if you've got hydraulic brakes on your motor home. If you've got air brakes on your motor home then I would recommend Demco's Air Force One as that's a truly proportional system that is designed to work specifically with air brakes. The inertia sensitivity can be adjusted using the knob here. You'll simply want to loosen it up and then you can push it up or down to increase or decrease the sensitivity. When I set this up, I like to set it up to the point where it's just high enough to when I hit the brake pedal in my motorhome that it does not activate the pedal when we're just sitting still. That's just a good starting point. From there, you will need to make some minor tweaks just depending on the weight of your motorhome, the weight of your vehicle, all that kind of plays in on how it's going to feel when driving your motorhome. The operating unit that we have here is located underneath the hood in our vehicle inside the engine compartment. And this is where everything happens. This box has the pump inside that's going to send air pressure down this line to activate the cylinder on the pedal inside. And the hose here is attached directly into the vacuum line for our brake booster, which means it's going to pull vacuum on there so that way we have power brakes whenever this activates, just like we're driving around normally. It's nice to have that power assist. It definitely takes a lot of the effort off of the braking system and gives it a nice smooth application. As an additional safety feature, your system does come included with a breakaway switch as well as the breakaway tether. And in the event of a catastrophic disconnect, the tether here would pull the pin located inside of our breakaway switch there, and that would activate our braking system to help our vehicle come to a safe stop. We're going to go ahead and pull this pin now, and you can see the pedal inside activating. And you'll also notice that on the back side of our mirror assembly, we do have an indicator light that you can easily monitor using the camera in your motor home, and that's going to illuminate when the pedal is applied. So while I think Demco's Stay and Play Duo and the Air Force One are the two best braking systems depending on your motor home, there are a couple other options and one of them being is a portable system. And a portable is a good option if you have multiple vehicles that you're wanting to flat tow or maybe you have a vehicle that you're currently flat towing and you're wanting to maybe switch out every so often, then I would recommend Blue Ox's Patriot. There's the Patriot 2 as well as the newer version that just came out, the Patriot 3. All of those are extremely easy to set up. You just set them in the seat. Right in front of your seat, they go on the floor and they activate the pedal. There's almost no installation required other than just setting it in place. It does come with a breakaway switch. That's pretty much your only installation is mounting that at the front. The only drawback to the system is you do have to take it in and out every time you want a flat tow. But the best part is, is if you were to change vehicles, it's as simple as pulling it out and setting it in that other one. We'll begin our installation by mounting all the major components so we know where to route all of our wiring. 
Now you might notice that I've got the front fascia off of here because I just got done putting the base plate on and that's the perfect opportunity to finish up the rest of your flat toe installation while that's off because routing all of your wiring and everything is going to be a lot easier. The first thing we're going to mount is our operating unit which is here in the front and we just used the included self-tapping screws to run it right down into the sheet metal here at the top of our core support. There's plenty of room so you don't have to worry about those screws going down and hitting your radiator. That's going to keep it nice and in place. I did kind of just give a bend to it so that way our hood can clear and it fits right down in this pocket very nicely. Next we'll mount our breakaway switch and this is going to attach directly to our base plate that we've got installed. Now depending on your base plate it may be in a slightly different location but in most cases the base plate manufacturers provide you with a place for your electrical and your breakaway switch. We then need to mount our interior control unit and, and this box here is just going to mount on our driver's side right into the kick panel here on the left right down there at the bottom and we just use the screws that come included with it they'll thread directly into the plastic and hold it secure into place. Next we'll need to mount our operating cylinder and this is going to clamp right around your brake pedal here. Just undo the nuts that come included with it. Then you can take off the plate that's behind those nuts. Slide this side on, slide your plate back on the opposite side, and then retighten down the nuts. When tightening these down, you don't want to tighten them too tight. I actually just use a 3-8 socket in my hand and just tighten it down by hand using the socket. That way it's going to get us a nice good clamp, like this isn't going anywhere. But we're not going to bend it or deform it because we haven't over tightened it. Coming out of the back of our cylinder, you have a cord here, this little wire. This is going to anchor it to the firewall. I did cut out a little section of the rubber here using a razor knife so I could mount it directly onto the metal, the sheet metal of the firewall. And the little anchor that you see here just has one self-tapping screw that we ran right into it to hold it in place. On top of our anchor, there's a set screw and that's used to set the length of cable here. You want to make sure you've got it pulled fairly taut with just a little bit of slack. If you grab your cylinder here, you can see we've got just a little bit of slack into it there. That's kind of what you're looking for is something like that. So pull your slack through. You can see there's one loop around the anchor. So we made one loop go through, loop it back around through it, and then pull off your slack. Then you can tighten on that set screw on stop using a four millimeter Allen key. I like to tighten it down until it's about flush. You don't want to over tighten it. And I found that when you go flush, that usually gets it nice and snug that holds your cable without causing any damage to it. Next, we mounted the LED indicator here, and this is going to light up whenever your brake pedal is applied by your braking system. So you can see there it's operating. We mounted it here. It just uses some double-sided adhesive to stick to this panel. You could also put it on the back side of your mirror. This just seemed to work out a little bit better, a little flatter surface, so it stuck better to it. The mirror's curvature and stuff, it wanted to peel off of there. So I just cut out just a little notch. This whole panel will pull down. You can just actually just pull it off of there. It's just held on by clips. And that notch just let me poke the wire up and then the wires routed behind this panel and this up here all the way up to our headliner and then we just poked it into the headliner like this going all the way down once we got to this point over here we just kind of pushed our fingers in there and then poke the wire around this and then go down your weather stripping and again you can just poke your fingers in there and push you can kind of see the wire right there it's real dark but there it is right there where i kind of just poked it in and we just poke it all the way down until we get to this seam right here. Once you get to this seam here, I actually just pushed in on this plastic panel and then I pushed the wire up underneath this seam so that way it would come out here on the other side. It's going to have two wires coming out of it. You'll have a red and a black. The red is our positive, which we'll need to get a signal from our brake pedal switch. And the black is just our ground, which we're going to hook to our unit here so that way it only gets ground when you have the switch turned on and when you turn it off it removes that ground so that way it's not lighting up every time you're just driving around normal. Now unfortunately our Jeep Grand Cherokee here doesn't have a regular stoplight switch on it from the factory. It actually has a pedal position sensor and those just don't give you on or off for your brake light signal. They're actually a variable signal that's not going to work properly with our LED light. We also sell stoplight switches here at eTrailer.com this is an additional switch that's installed next to your factory one. So your factory one's still there. It still does everything it needs to. But this additional one we added is just going to give us that stoplight power that we need to go to our indicator. So that way it sees whenever we push our pedal, it, it closes the switch and we get power out. The two leads coming off the back of this switch are 
basically the same. It doesn't matter which one you hook your wires to. So that's why they're both black, they're not color coded. One of them, which I have a red wire attached to here, runs through the firewall and connects to our battery to give us power to it all the time. And then the other lead here that comes off of it, I just attached some green wire to it. This comes with your stoplight switch kit. This is just a little extra length. It just makes it easier to work with. And that's going to attach to the red wire on our LED kit. This way, whenever we press down on the pedal, the switch will close and send power to our LED indicator. The black wire coming off of our LED indicator here, we just attached it with a butt connector that comes included with our braking system. We just ran this to a piece of black wire that comes in our kit. And then we just use a quick splice to attach that black wire from our LED indicator to the black wire coming off of the small unit that we mounted just onto the kick panel right over there. You can see coming out of the back here, you've got several color of wires. This black one's the one we want to attach to. We just attach to it further on down the wire so we can hide it behind our, car our carpet. Now that all the major components are mounted, we need to start hooking everything else up. We already covered the indicator due to its special needs of an additional switch, but the rest of the wires that are coming off of this switch and the black one, all of the wires that are coming off of that, we just route behind the carpet until we hit this grommet right over here. And we feed our wires through this grommet so we can get them outside to our energy compartment where we make our connections. The air line that comes included with your kit makes a great fish wire, so you can take this wire and poke it through that grommet and then find it on the other side. Now it is a little bit difficult to find it due to the way the Jeep is shaped, but we'll show you where it's about going to pop out. And since you're going to be using your airline as a fish wire, which is what I recommend, you can leave part of this airline in there so you can pull this back and forth, use it to fish wire all your wires, and then once you're done, it's going to connect to this cylinder right here, so you want to just go ahead and leave it in there. So this is what we're talking about on the other side. We're on the driver's side right here at the corner where the hood is open, and here's your brake fluid reservoir. It actually pokes out underneath the uh, brake booster right there. That's where that grommet comes out. And you can see the wires here where they came out poking through there. So it is a little bit difficult, but you can get your hand down in there and you can grab it to pull it up. So just take your time with it. All of our wires that routed out, we then came out through here with the exception of the power wire for the stoplight switch. We actually just connected that to the red wire that's here because that's going to run across to our battery to get power. But for now, we're going to focus on the wires that come out of our box that we mounted inside on the lower kick panel. And you're going to have a yellow, a white, a green, a black, and a red. We're going to start with the yellow, white, and green wires, and then we'll come back to our black and red. The yellow and green wire are your left and right stop and turn signal wires, and your braking system needs to know when you're hitting the brake and what's turn signal. So it's gonna be able to monitor these through your diode wiring kit. So when you installed your diode wiring kit, it's a great idea to meet, leave those to where they're accessible because these are gonna tap right into those wires. You can see, here's our diode wiring. I cut the wires right here, and then I just reattached a butt connector onto those wires that I'd cut. But then on the other side, I reattached it to the wire I'd cut, but I'd also taken the yellow wire here from our that we routed from the inside, and I added that to the side of the butt connector. Same thing with our green wire here. We're just, we're just cutting it and reattaching the two green ends together from our diode kit, but we're adding the green wire from our unit to one side of that. Our white wire coming off of there is just a ground wire, so you'll have a ring terminal that comes in your kit. You can crimp it onto the white wire, and we attached it right to the stud located right here. Just pull this bolt out with a 13 millimeter socket, slide it on there, and then reattach it. You may or may not need to cut the ring terminal to give yourself a little bit extra space due to the thickness of the bolt, so that way it fits over the bolt. The black and the red wire that comes from the box inside is gonna hook to the black and red wire coming off the control unit that we'd mounted at the front of the vehicle. So we just routed the wires from that control unit over to here, and we connected red to red and black to black, so it can't be any easier than that. We did also take all the butt connectors that are in our kit and we replaced them with heat shrink butt connectors now that we're outside the vehicle. This way it's going to seal up on the ends and ensure we have long lasting connections that are free of corrosion. Coming off of our operating unit now, we're going to head over to here. This has four wires coming out of it. You're going to have a red and a black, which we already talked about. Those are routed over there. Those are connected, but you're also going to have a blue and a brown. These blue and brown are going to be our power and our breakaway switch connections. So the blue wire coming off of your unit, we're going to hook to the black wire, which is right here, coming from the breakaway switch that we mounted in the front. 
The other wire coming off the breakaway switch is going to be an orange wire and we're going to hook that to our brown wire right here. But our brown wire also needs to go to our battery. So I got the tape covering it up on this one side. So you can actually see here on our brown wire, the orange wire coming from the breakaway switch, we go to a butt connector. And our brown wire here, what we did, since you get such a long amount of brown wire in your kit coming off of this, and we're just connecting right here, we cut off the excess brown wire. We attached the brown wire that was still attached to our unit to the butt connector. And then the brown wire, the excess that we cut off, we stripped it back and attached it to the other side of this butt connector and we routed that wire towards our battery. So I began routing it towards the driver's side and then up and around. And we did run out of brown wire eventually because your battery is a pretty far way away from this location, but you do get some red wire just spooled up in your kit, some extra red wire. And that's the perfect wire to use to continue that journey onto the battery. So we just heat shrink butt connected it to that. We poked it through the same hole here, but we're not going inside. We actually just route it across here behind the weather stripping, just poked it down in there all the way across because our battery connection point is going to be over here on the passenger side, right over here. Over here on this side, our red wire routed across. Once we got over here, we stripped back the red wire and attached it to the fuse harness that comes in our kit. And then the other end of our fuse harness, we connected a ring terminal to and then attached it to the battery positive stud located right here. Now the fuse, I have it in here because we went ahead and finished it, but I recommend leaving your fuse out until you've got your install completed so that way you don't accidentally cause any shorts and pop your fuse. Now earlier we talked about powering up our stoplight switch on the inside. This is the red wire we routed out for the stoplight switch. And this is the red wire that runs over to power our braking system. We just cut it right there and used a butt connector to attach it to it. Because this is just for the indicator light on the inside, so it's not really adding any additional load. Now we talked about using the airline as a pull wire, and we already pushed it into the cylinder on the inside. It's just a quick connect. We routed that out just like we did our wiring here. We used it as our pull wire. And with it, we just then continued it on, going around our air box, just staying around all these components. It's gonna go over here to the operating unit where it's just gonna go into here. Now, this airline does need to be cut to length. Now, when you connect it to your box or inside, it's really important that you have a nice, clean, square cut that's perpendicular to your line. If you just use a regular pair of side cutters, you're gonna deform the end and it's not probably gonna seal properly. You'll wanna use a pair of hose cutters, which you can get here at eTrailer.com, so you can add that at checkout. And if you look here, when we make this cut, it just slices right through it like butter and we've get a nice clean square cut out of it with this type of cutter. And this is gonna seal properly when we push it into the quick connect. And lastly, we need to connect our operating unit here to the brake vacuum booster so we can have power assist. The nipple coming off of here is gonna have a check valve pre-attached to it. And you're gonna get some 3 8 vacuum line in your kit. So we're just gonna poke this right onto there. A little bit of silicone spray will help it slide easier onto any of the fittings for it. And we route this over and we actually just go down there and then we head back. Cause this line right here is our brake vacuum booster line. You can see the T that I've cut and added into it. And this brake vacuum booster line works out pretty nice because it's the same diameter as the line we're gonna attach. So it works directly with all of our fittings. So we went ahead and we cut it about here and we put a check valve in. We made sure to put the black side going on towards our engine and the clear side off towards our booster. This is just another small section of the factory vacuum line. I just cut a little section of that out and put it on there. And we poked our T-fitting into it. And this is also factory vacuum line here, so the T-fit right in between our factory vacuum line. And this is the new line that we had to run from our operating unit plugged into it right there. So now that we've got everything connected, we're ready to test everything out. The unit on the inside on the floor panel, you want to hit the switch and flick it to the on position. And then if we pull our breakaway pin here, it should activate and illuminate our LED indicator. And we could hear the pump running there. The indicator I could see was lit up on the back. Get an assistant to help us watch the pedal to make sure it's pulling our pedal properly as well. Now that we've tested it out and everything's working properly, we can clean up any of our wiring with the included zip ties, clean everything up, get any panels on the inside that we had removed back in place, and we can get our fascia back on. 
We're not going to put our fascia back into place. I've just kind of held it up there. It's not going to go all the way back on because we do have to do some trimming in order for it to fit properly. But we wanted to get an idea where our electrical connectors and our breakaway switch are going to be because we're going to have to trim those out. So we're just kind of looking through here and we're just going to make our marks on roughly the location we're going to need to trim for our components to fit properly. So now that we've got our front marked, you can see here that these little inside panels are hitting on our base plate, preventing it from going in. So we're going to go ahead and take it back off and trim out so that way this is going to fit properly. So here's the ears that we were talking about. We're just going to cut this off on each side using our snips here. And now we'll come back to our grill here and the area that we marked. We're going to go ahead and trim that out. And then we can just use some cleaning solution to remove any marks that we had made. And then we're going to put our fascia back on in reverse order of how we removed it. When putting your fascia back on, remember when we had to drill out the rivets here so we could remove them? Your base plate kit does come with new rivets, but you will need a plastic rivet gun in order to install them. They simply push into the rivet gun here in the opening hole. Push the center all the way in there. And this is just going to poke right in to where we drilled out the rivet. We're going to squeeze the gun and we're going to keep pressure up against this and it's going to pull that tight, sealing it in there. The old part usually stays inside the rivet gun. Not really a big deal. We just push it out with the next one. We'll then do this on the other side as well. Now once you get your fascia on, your electrical connector here we were unable to install it before due to clearance and getting it to pass through, so we can go back and finish that up now. We've got our wiring here. We just kind of pulled it through the opening after we put the fascia on. We are going to trim off some of the excess here because we don't need it. I do like to leave some excess because it just makes doing any repairs or adding accessories, things like that, a lot easier if you can just disconnect this connector and slide it out a little bit so you can work on it. So we trimmed off that excess. We're then gonna separate each one of these wires by snipping in between them. We'll then peel them back a little bit and strip each one back. Now, this is gonna vary slightly depending on the kit that you purchased. If you did get the kit with the four pole end and you don't have a braking system and you just need lights, you would actually just leave that four pole on there. If you got a kit with a six pole, then that's when we need to separate these and cut each one back. Now, some of the kits don't come with a four pole or a six pole because Roadmaster has plenty of tow bars available, and those tow bars come with your six pole, so that's why there's kits that don't come with the six pole, since your tow bar may come with it. But this one came with our tow bar, so we're gonna go ahead and slide the boot over our wires. And then we're gonna take each one of these wires. I like to give them a little twist. It just helps ensure that none of the strands accidentally pop out of the hole and jump over and short out to another circuit. Once we've got all these prepared, we're just gonna come over here to our connector. Everything's gonna be held on using the Phillips screws that you see there. So we're gonna loosen up the ones that we need. GD is ground, we're gonna be using that one. That's our white wire. LT is left turn, that's our yellow wire, so we'll be using that one. RT is right turn. That's our green wire, so we're going to loosen up that one. Next is S. That is a not used one. That would normally for your brake circuit, but we, for like a brake controller and stuff, we're, we're not using that one with our flat toe. Next is TM. That's for our tail lights. We will be using that one. And then lastly is the center pin, which we're not going to be using either. This is typically your charge line circuit, so if you wanted to add a charge line kit, you would connect it to this post. This last one's just an open circuit. It's really used for just any kind of other accessory that you might want to use it for. Oftentimes, if we do use it, we'll use it for powering up a monitor light inside your motor home. Now that we've got them all loose, we're just gonna go back around and push in each color wire into its appropriate location based on, to, based on the label written on there. So GD was ground and white, so we're just gonna slide that guy in there. Tighten it back down and then just continue our way around. Once you've got all your connections made, we can go ahead and reinstall it. I like to take dielectric grease and fill up the back cavity here. And I like to put a generous amount on it to keep out any moisture and corrosion. And then after I slide the boot over it, I like to take some electrical tape and run it around the front and the back. Just further help seal it in and keep our dielectric grease inside of there. 
Then we can take the screws that came included with our base plate and attach it right to our base plate attachment point. We're now ready to hook up our vehicle behind our motorhome and hit the road. And that completes our installation of Demco Stay and Play Duo Supplemental Braking System on our 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee.